I like diving into different steels that it interests me, you know, and I, I like to learn about them. But it's not a make or break for me if if I see a knife and I'm, oh, it's got S30V, I can't buy that. But, you know, I'll still buy it. So steel is not a make or break, but it's it's always a plus. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Hello, Knife Junkie, and welcome to episode number 90 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. It is the place for knife newbies and knife junkies to learn all about knives and knife collecting and hear from folks in the industry like knife designers, knife makers, manufacturers, YouTube knife reviewers, hint, hint, wink, wink, which is somebody we're going to talk to today that fits into that category. But if you're not in any of those categories and you love knives, well, you still are in the right place. The Knife Junkie Podcast. Bob, how's it going? It's going great. How you doing, Jim? Doing pretty good. Looking forward to our interview today. It's our weekend interview show, and I Gave a little hint. I don't know if anybody caught it. The hint, hint. It was wink. pretty subtle. It was pretty yeah. subtle, Jim, uh, but I, I picked up on it. Okay. Well, I figured you would. <laughs> <laughs> Stasa 23. We talked to Stasa 23. Very excited to talk to him. Uh, he's a YouTuber. Most of you probably know him. He's got great taste in knives, great access to knives, and uh, he's another one of these guys that I've watched so much of his videos, I felt like I know knew him or know him and, and uh, in speaking with him uh, and i uh, I got to know him greater. We're, we're going to see each other at Blade. A great guy. Going to be seeing each other at Blade. Isn't how, that how nice that to say? Sound? I love saying that. <laughs> I'll see you at Blade. That uh, interview is coming up next, but I do want to remind you that uh, the Knife Junkie does have a YouTube channel, and you can find his uh, videos, his knife reviews, his uh, unboxing videos, his collection videos, all that kind of good stuff at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube as well as Thursday Night Knives live video show that you can catch right there on the YouTube channel, as well as at the Facebook page, which you can find at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. So two different places to watch Thursday Night Knives. So we'll hope you'll uh, check that out this coming Thursday. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you've got questions or comments, call the 24-7 Knife Junkie listener line at 724-466-4487. So I have Stasa23 in the house for some knife therapy. Stasa23 is one of my favorite YouTube knife reviewers. Stasa, thank you so much for coming on the show, sir. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Oh, uh, It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. So uh, first, I got to ask you, what are you, what are you carrying today? Oh, let's see. I got two on me. <laughs> I'm bad about that. I got the uh, Void, the Sharp by Design Void on me. Oh, man. And uh, actually, I have a custom in my pocket, um, Oz Machine Company, Roosevelt. What is that? His name's Oz Machine Company on Instagram. Oh, yes. The Roosevelt. And I, I, this year, I haven't had any customs before this year, and... Uh, you know, after 20 something years of collecting, I was able to sell a bunch and actually afford some of them. That's uh, that is a great place to be. That's kind of where I am at the moment. I'm I'm um, I'm moving into um, well, I'm slowly getting there. I right now I'm I'm uh, I have I have two, and it's a nice feeling to know that you have a knife that was 100% uh, in in someone's hands, you know. Yes, and 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 by the way, uh, just just to uh, douse any confusion, uh, I I include CNC uh, handmade knife makers as in their hands the whole time, like a Brian. Yes, show. that's just like the Oz. The Oz is a CNC made. So uh, how is that void? At first, first I had a few little minor issues, but uh, contacted Brian, and he got back to me immediately, and pretty much. You know, said if his fixes didn't work, to let him know he'd send me a new one. So can't complain there. It's a nice folder. I have uh, I've never had myself a uh, a sharp eye design. I've never actually held a sharp eye design. And uh, this past um, run of knives before the void, uh, the arch nemesis, that amazing amazing uh, dagger, is just about my favorite 
folding knife design probably that I've ever seen. And uh, every day on in- Instagram, it was like a new a new stab to the heart seeing some beautiful new version of uh, of his knife roll out and go to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's usually the case. <laughs> I'm not one to stalk some of these makers uh, on Instagram like some people do. I mean, if you want to get your hands on on these, you you do have to uh, uh, keep your ear to the ground because uh, you know, it's amazing how quickly knife models come and go. Oh yeah, especially when they're in demand. Yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, you you probably don't know much about me. I I love the big, ridiculous cold steel knives, and uh, that was. Um, uh, the the new Cold Steel Voyager, Chris, uh, they keep kind of teasing that they make like seven or eight of them and then get them out in the public. And then it's like nothing for for weeks and weeks. And I'm right there right now. Kind of like I just I just want to get this Chris in my hands. You know? oh, I, saw, I saw your video on it. I watch your videos. Don't worry. Oh, cool. That's a good one. The uh, tie light, Chris, is pretty sweet. But um, but anyway, uh, so. Tell me what got you into knives. You said 20 some odd years you've been collecting. What was the impetus? Why knives? Why not wrenches or little penguin figurines? Well, I live in the south, south Louisiana. I have two older brothers. We always went hunting together. And just remember whenever I was, you know, six or seven years old at the hunting camp, seeing my brother with the buck knife on his side, you know, I just... I drooled over it. I, I, I was, I've always been fascinated with them. Like I have a true passion for knives. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. I know. I, I you, you know that snowball effect. After that, it just keeps getting worse and worse. <laughs> so, so then, what was your first knife? Was it a a, a buck one ten or or whatever your brother was? Oh uh, no! Actually, it started out as a cheap gas station knife that I found in the woods. And then one that was actually given to me, uh, my dad gave me a Boy Scout knife. And then my first, like, knife that I got to pick was, like, I think the Buck 55, I think, the little one. Yeah. Uh, Actually, um, Jim, the man producing this uh, very podcast, uh, showed me a picture of an auction lot and uh, a a Buck 55 was in there. And that was one of the few knives that I said, oh, yeah, that makes this lot worth it for sure. I love that little knife. Yeah, it's a good little knife. So what is knife therapy? You always, uh, you introduce your videos, you say uh, that you're back with some knife therapy. What is knife therapy? Explain that to me. Well, see, I, I, I like I said, I've been into the collecting for a long time. Um, four and a half years ago, I was in a really bad work accident. Uh, I, was, I was blown up in a chemical plant explosion and... I spent a lot of time in the hospital. So whenever I got out, finally got home, you know, the, my coping with the PTSD of it was the knives. So it truly means knife therapy for me because everybody in the community is what got me through a lot of tough times besides my family, you know? Mm. So it, some people think I just mean it by, you know, just showing knives, but no, I truly mean knife therapy for me. Well, you look at your uh, your logo too. You can see uh, you can you can see the reference to I can't remember the name of the snakes, the uh, Hippocrates snakes or whatever they are. But I mean, that's what it is. It's it's about losing yourself in something so that you can forget the the current moment. Yeah, I I don't know if you know Tony Meader on Instagram. Not sure I do. He's a uh, he's a good bit older than me, but um, I had to ask people on my channel to help me design a logo. And Tony is a graphic designer, and he shot me that, knowing my story. So I got to give all credit to him. Oh man, it is it is beautiful. So uh, did you start your channel, uh, which is you know just been kind of just blowing up ever since you started? Did you start your channel um, after this? accident and uh, is that when when the videos started happening um probably about well it took me a good two years before i could you know really think about doing anything like that or two and maybe yeah, about two years uh first year i was still open <laughs> i had wounds bad i burned 80 percent of my body so it was, it was bad for that you know first year and a half two years so once i was able to deal with the pain enough. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want people to see that or have to hear that. 
So I, I finally kind of talked me. I kind of talked to my friend about it. I was nervous to do it, you know, because I've never talked behind a camera before. Mm-hmm. And he was like, just tape a few videos and don't post them until you get comfortable. So that's what I did. <laughs> and then it, you know, gets easier and easier as you go. So does it, uh, is it to you now, um, sort of part and parcel of how you, uh, evaluate a knife? Does knowing that you're going to make a video about it force you to, uh, really look into the knife itself? Not whether you enjoy it, but, uh, how it performs and that kind of thing. It's kind of funny because I always looked at knives like that. (laughs) So it's more so now I get to get it out of my head and let other people know. You know, I was big into the YouTube scene before. I'd say I got into YouTube as far as like watching it and consuming it about seven years ago when they had a whole different batch of people, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it was more so about like modding and stuff like that. That was the big thing back then. And, uh... I gained a lot of knowledge through a lot of watching, you know. <laughs> well, is that where your modding came from? You've done quite a bit. That's where I got my insp- tough thumbs with my insp- inspiration back in the day, and Alex Deeds and yeah. all them guys. You know, I started back then because I couldn't afford the more expensive knife, so I would make my own. You know, <laughs> that's where I got it. That's where I got inspired to do that. Well, so I'm I'm interested in how you evaluate a knife and kind of what your criteria are for any given knife. I mean, uh, understanding that it might have one purpose or another. Uh, so I want to ask you about that to describe kind of how you go about evaluating a knife and, and what you're looking for. And also, uh, you've mentioned about how your hands are very sensitive from your accident Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can see evidence of that in the videos that your hands were, were damaged. Yeah. And um, so how, how does ergonomics uh, affect, how, how are the ergonomics affected? That's something that I can tell really easily before I even do my normal test that I do. It's a blessing and a curse. And they've gotten a lot better. I, I can handle, it's just my dexterity is not the greatest. Any, like I, I'm having to work up. I can't sharpen by hand anymore which I didn't do a whole lot before, but I was able to do it. But, uh, you know, ne- like now when I'm thinking about, you know, I, I, I see a knife that it interests me visually and I I kind of have to have some stock in the company too if I'm going to buy it myself. And once I find that knife, it can be budget expensive or whatever I try, I try not to go too expensive on the channel because let's be honest there's not a lot of people who like to watch the most like super expensive stuff mm-hmm. because they can't afford it and I understand so I try to keep it you know in that 200 and under you know all over the place it could be a $20 knife I love them all yeah <laughs> just, I'm a knife guy so it doesn't matter what kind of knife it is if it speaks to me you know yeah yeah and when I first get it, I do a, a quick inspection of it, check the lockup, make sure there's no play, make sure the detent sound that, you know, there's no wobble in the detent and no, no glaring flaws like right off the back. Then I throw it in the pocket, carry it and use it. Um, and just so I can kind of like right before I do the video, couple of days I spend on, I got a few little set cut tests I do just to kind of see how the steel performs, making sure it's not, you know, garbage okay. <laughs> or my sample isn't garbage. And I do like cardboard, rope, plastic bottles. Um, and for me, when I test ergonomics, I carve into wood because I find that that's the best tell, you know, without having to destroy your knife. Just doing a little whittling and pushing hard into some wood, you'll feel the hot spots quick. Right. And, you know, once I do all that, I pretty much have my review done because, you know, all the things I want to know about the knife, I find it in using it. How important are the aesthetics of the knife to you? I mean, because you, you mentioned, okay, to me, it's very important. Uh, yeah. Because uh, that's just one of the aspects of my being a knife lover. It's It's a very visual thing. So you said you're initially drawn to the design, but then once you put it through this battery of tests, you're, you either 
like it or you don't. So I, I get a knife. I don't put it through that battery of tests. And so it makes it harder to get rid of. When, when you are finished, do you find that you are less attached to something because of how it performs? Uh, yeah, I guess you could say that because I find the ones that go in my pocket more often are the one I, I like a good slicer. I like a nice thin, thin edge and a good performer. It doesn't have to be the best deal in the world. I can sharpen and I can touch up a knife. I can strop a knife. So as long as uh, it, it, it performs well as far as slicing capabilities and it's not going to go dull after two cuts, you know? Well, do you have a favorite steel? Are you do you do you uh, do you have preferences? Do you get snobbish about steel? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not I, I, don't get me wrong. I like I like the uh, I like diving into different steels. That it interests me, you know, and I, I like to learn about them. But it's not a make or break for me if if I see a knife and I'm, oh, it's got S thirty V. I can't buy that. But you know, I'll still buy it. So. Steel is not a make or break, but it's it's always a plus. Right, right. I I like knowing that it's a good steel, even if I I'm not pushing it anywhere near yeah, it. Yeah, of course. Boundaries, which is yeah, yeah. So what are what are your favorite knives right now? Like what what were your picks from 2019? What are you carrying the most? Oh, you know, getting new knives all the time. The 2019s have kind of rolled out out of my rotation already. So no, um. I'll tell you, lately, this that Roosevelt I was talking about that's in my pocket, it's been in the pocket ever since I got it. And that's why I definitely always have two knives on me because that's in there. Um, been carrying a small Sedenza 21 lately uh, with the Nkosi blade shape. I like that. You know, you can't go wrong with a Chris Reeve knife. Yeah. So you always you always carry two knives. That's like one for you and one for the channel. Yeah, use ninety percent of the time. That's the case. I, I usually have like you know one that I want to carry, unless you know, unless the one I'm reviewing, I, I like it, you know, just as much as all the rest. And uh, I might have two for that I'm carrying for review because you know I, I definitely have a backlog that's outrageous, and I know you do too because I watch your videos. Like I said, <laughs> your backlog is forever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, so where do you like? Where do you get your knives? Uh, um, you know, for for me, it's uh, there. It's all my own personal uh, collection, and there are a lot of knives I haven't done videos on. But you have a responsibility, sir. I mean, like in in a sense, you um, reviewers like yourself, you know, people count on you for for having new stuff. I mean, I would imagine there's a little bit of pressure for you to kind of be moving having a steady flow. Where, where do you get all the knives? Are they all yours? What, how's that work? Um, <laughs> most of them are, but I'm really lucky because my local gun shop, I have become really good friends with them. I go to Blade Show with the floor manager there. And in the last probably six, six to seven years, they really got a nice selection. And I'm, I'm part of that. <laughs> Tell them y'all should go ahead and get this and this. <laughs> nice. Well, that yeah, you've done a lot of videos from from that store. Yes. And uh, I, I'm always like, man, this place has a killer collection. I mean, mm -hmm. or you know, selection. And so you're you're kind of a part curator of that. Yeah. You know, like it's it's funny. As soon as they get uh, any new knives, and I don't care how many it is. All of a sudden, I get a whole bunch of videos pop up on my phone, and it's my buddy showing me all the new stuff. And I'm like, cool. he's like, you want me to hold anything for you? I'm like, I'm coming. <laughs> Give me a second. I'm coming. <laughs> so what are, what are your picks then for 2020? I, I, this 2019 is, is so old and cold. 2020, what do you like the best? While you're thinking about this, one of your videos, uh, you were at Real Steel this year, right? I'm, I'm sorry, not Real Steel. Steel will. I do that all the time. Steel Wheel and Real Steel, Real Steel. So Steel Will has out a number of really cool models uh, this year. Um, the that new one, the little one, I can't remember what it's called now, uh, is neat. But but there's one called the Scylla uh, that kind of uh, has a a unique extended tang with a with a thumb stud on the end of the extended tang. Kind of looks a little bit like a straight razor when closed. But you can use it to kind of wave it open. And that's the kind of stuff I love. I mean, it's so high-speed, low-drag. 
tactical. Yeah, for the suburbs, you know, I need it. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Not at all, not at all. So uh, anything uh, anything pop to mind? As far as Steel Wheel, I know one that made it on my top 10 um, under $100 was the Sargas. I, I'm, a, I'm a Clip Point fan. My all-time, I, don't, I, I, I drool over Clip Points. Especially the Lanny's clip point. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's just uh, I don't I don't own any, but I don't own a Lanny's at least. I did, but I don't own own one now. And then as far as everything from Civivi, as far as budget goes, they listen to the market. You know, they hear all this craze of everybody wanting, or a lot of the enthusiasts wanting thinned out edges and blah yeah. blah, blah. They have very thin edges some of the thinnest i mean i i don't know another company that does them as thin as they do production wise so i think you were one of the first people that i became aware of who measured right behind the edge i do that with a caveat uh -huh. it, it's never uh, uh an exact science <laughs> i mean you know roundabout yeah right exactly i mean i i can i yeah, i've tried you know not too many times for some reason i Maybe it's because my math skills are somewhat atrocious, but the numbers, when I hear people say, call out w what what the measurement is behind the edge, I'm always kind of like, is that thin? <laughs> and, then, <laughs> yeah. and then I hear it compared to a paramilitary. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess that's, you know, on the thinner side. Um, yeah. So, is this something that you, like, came, st started doing because uh, you were curious from, like, from doing tests, from cutting through cardboard and different mediums? Or, or is this just uh, a recent trend because people actually like to cut things and not just pry with their knives? Well, I'll tell you, the, the trend that's going on now kind of helped me because I do, like you said, doing the test, I always, I mean, I knew the thickness of the blade and, you know, stuff like that. And um, I knew the geometry had a big part in it, but I didn't know how much all that stuff had to do with how well a knife performed until I, you know, I started really getting into it and geeking out over it and sharpening. I, I own, I've, I'm on my second Wicked Edge already and, wow. you know, getting knives, I would get certain knives just as sharp as the next and they weren't cutting as good and as long, you know, and it's because of the steel and the geometry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, that's part of that's that's pretty much the reason why. So so you were making the edges as uniform as possible, and uh, and then kind of taking it taking it from there. Yeah, like two knives at seventeen degrees per side. Yeah. You know, but one of them being extremely thick behind the edge. You know, the sec the the primary bevel. You know, is really thick, and you're actually catching a ledge on there whenever you cut through some thick material. Yeah. And that's some of like, you know, one of my tests is cutting like through this, this really thick rubber. And if it's thick, it's, if your blade's thick, it's not going through there. <laughs> it just abrades really quick. But, it, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not calling a company and asking them how thin their edge is. You know, that's not going to be a criteria for me to buy it. But, you know, I know certain companies that do a good job of having at least a serv serv serviceable edge. <laughs> Right. Well, who who are your favorites, or or who in your estimation are the best? Uh, from my testing, like that, pretty much any company that uses PRC treat, they're gonna be spot on. Oh. Uh, Riot does an excellent job. As far as for at least the ones I've tested, I I put one of their two hundred four P uh, blades in the. I have a, a K two or whatever K three. Mm -hmm. It's the harpoonish shaped one. Shaped one. And I I beat that thing <laughs> crazy, and it it did not lose its keen edge at all. Wow! I mean, it, I I have a it's just, I have a video. I've actually recorded that one because I was like after the first few things, I was kind of shocked on how well it was doing. But that goes with the heat rate, you know, yeah. how well it was done. Well, that's amazing. I have a um I have the K two, which is the the Tanto. It's kind of the most traditional yeah. looking of that. Katana handle. Yeah. yeah. Oh God. I love that knife. It is, it is really an, an, an incredible knife and it's hollow ground and so very, very thinly hollow ground. 
Yes. And, uh, I am not going to bash mine. I am not going to do well, any of those tests on mine, but it's good to know that you did. <laughs> well, saying that, the the one that I have is a flat grind, and it's kind of, wow. it's like 28 thousandths, which is pretty thick. I mean, it's our 25, we have the Spyderco uh, PM2 is 20 thousandths, so just a point of reference. Right. It's a little bit thicker, so maybe, you know, that's part of the reason why I can handle some of the beating, you know, like right. hammering through wires and stuff. But it still proves that they're on point with their heat treat. So still, that means their super thin ground S35 is, is going to be probably about as good as S35EN is going to get. Correct. What What about uh, American companies? Who do you like uh, American? Um, CRK. I, I, I like Hinder a lot. I love their designs. Um, I've owned many of XM18s. Mm-hmm. But... I have gotten rid of all my XM18s because my fingers can't handle that fl- the jumping behind the flipper tab. Oh yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm kind of debating on buying one and grinding it off, <laughs> but it's kind of hard to do that to that expensive of a knife. Yeah, no kidding. I, I, I think the half track is. Uh... Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. I own a half track now oh. with a crying regrind on it. Oh. Uh, I watched your. Um, I watch y'all do y'all thing podcast with them. Oh man, <laughs> I yeah. was sitting there playing with that knife. <laughs> oh my gosh, I, I had to, uh, I had to like physically restrain myself from buying a uh, a five hundred dollar five inch um, crine. I can't remember the name of it, but it's you would love it. It's a a Bowie, a little uh, a five inch for him. That's a one of his bigger models. Yeah, Bowie on uh, Blade Forums, and it was just like. You know, oh man, and and then I thought of my of my uh, knife chest with all these knives, kind of sitting fallow that I can't get rid of because they're so damn cool. <laughs> I'm like, if I could just get rid of them, I could own that crime right now. Yes, no doubt about it. You know, speaking of regrinds, I I have I have a um, Hinder XM18 Spanto, and it's always been sharp, and I've always loved it, but it's always been fat. I mean, just like a thick. The blade is thick. There's not, you know, and, and, and my lifestyle doesn't demand that, that kind of robustness in a blade. And, uh, I, I had Josh from Razor Edge on the, on the show and, uh, we were talking about regrind and I sent it to him and he sent it back a few months later and it, it too is ground so beautifully thin. Now it's my, by far my sharpest knife. Yes. That's another guy that I want. I want to send some, I've, I sent some knives not too long ago to, um, He's a new make a new maker named Brian from Transparent Knives. Okay. He's a good guy. He probably he would he would probably be interested in doing the podcast too because he's a he's an interesting guy. That's all I can say. He's smart. Mm-hmm. And I, I sent him three knives, a uh, Rex forty five para three, um, a bug out, and uh Benchmade nine forty. And he reground all those for me and they're just they cut so they, it's just so much. I, I I probably grab that bug out more than a lot of mother knives whenever I have to break down a bunch of boxes or something because it just glides through material like it's not even there. Wow! Wait, wait. So you? I'm, I'm sorry. Can you list those knives that you got reground again? The Benchmade 940. Uh, yeah. Benchmade bug out and uh, um. Spyderco Para 3 and Rex 45. Okay, okay. So you mentioned, uh, first you mentioned the 940. I'm like, well, yeah, of course. I, I'm not a huge fan of that knife, uh, though I, I have massive respect for it. But yeah, that's one that I could see. Like, you, That's a knife that, just from its very profile, you want it to be thinner, like uh, yes. that blade. Uh, but then you mentioned the bug out. And to me, you know, I have a bug out and it's so sharp and it's so small and light and thin. And to get that reground, I'm like, would you get it regrounded to like, you know? Well, it's it's thin, but I I went. It's not like standard. It's it's thicker than a power power two. So it, it was like twenty. Mine was twenty two thousand, twenty three thousand before. Now with that thin blade stock, it still cuts great, you know, at that thickness. But I just wanted to go ahead and try the thirteen thousand. Wow. Yeah, so it's it's nice and thin and like it's so the there's so many good qualities when you have a thin edge like that as long as you know what you're doing. Yeah. You know, you know you can't cut hardwoods or something like that with it. 
you just got to be smart, you know? Yeah, yes. And it's so easy to sharpen after that. It's so easy to strop because the bevel is so small after that. Okay, so now now I have a better understanding because you said uh, you said uh, uh, a para two is twenty twenty thousandths, mm-hmm. and and you went when you took it down to thirteen. That's crazy. Yeah. So tell me what you think from all of the knives you've handled and from what you've seen this year and what you see new coming out. What what are the what can we expect? What new trends uh, are on the horizon, especially in folding knives? Oh man. It used to be really easy easy to predict. Um, I see you still kind of see some of these companies going into slip joints, uh, modern traditionals, and I I think you'll have a lot more companies trying to either a come up with a new locking mechanism because that seems to be the big thing, or putting their spin on Benchmade's axis slot. <laughs> yeah right because i mean everybody's trying to tap into it and it's kind of sad to say but a lot of companies are doing it better than benchmade and they just started <laughs> yeah hoag hoag is killing it man i love yeah, that's another that's another american company that kills it on their heat treat and their quality is just exceptional yeah yeah and they build it all in house that yes they their their stuff is cool their stuff is cool no I, have a, uh, I have a really uh, awesome the the tomahawk. Uh, I can't E X T M O E X T O three or something like that. It's uh, an Alishwitz design tomahawk, and um, you know it's ideal for home home defense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that. Yeah, I I love their stuff. Um, yeah, I think I think you're right about the lock. I think there will always be people trying to come up with the next lock because there there aren't too many ways to innovate uh, you know on the oldest tool known to man uh but you can always kind of come up with a novel way of of locking it um yeah though i feel like we may have reached peak lock uh i'm like what, what you know what else because i the the new artisan lock that came yeah out. that's that's something that it's kind of strange it makes the blade look kind of funny yeah it's bulky it's like it's yeah. like it's too much you don't uh to me, it's not innovative if it adds extra, um, you know, in a way. And, and one exception uh, to me is the SLT, you know, flipper uh, that uh, Gus Ciccini uh, invented. And that's on the the zero tolerance zero zero five five. You know that yeah uh, looks like a stealth fighter. Uh, yep. That that is an interesting innovation, and it, it adds an extra step which isn't necessary. But you could argue it is necessary because it takes the uh, it takes the flipper tab away, kind of like the reverse of the kick stop. Anyway, that that's innovation, but is it necessary? I don't know. You know, you you talked about the GTC lock, and uh, what's uh, the difference between that and the kick stop? Okay, so the SLT has a a, a, a tab spring that loaded. yeah, it's spring spring loaded in in into a little nested spot. You you grab it, pull it. And then it reaches a first uh, stage, and then you apply more pressure, and then you feel uh, the blade give way, or the the detent give way, and the blade fly open. Um, but the same spring that holds it in uh, holds the SLT, the flipper, in place when it's closed, holds it in place when it's open as well. So it must have a cam or something in it. Uh, well, I think it's just a. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> and then, and then the it's magic to me. It's beautiful. <laughs> and then the kick stop is like you can when it's closed, you can see it, the tab like a regular flipper tab. But then you flip it, and it does not appear on the other side. Magically, again, it stays inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I, now I see the difference because I've handled both of them. That's true, and uh, the kick stop is just a piece connected to the blade where you pull it back and it disappears and then pushes on the back of the blade and shoots it up. Right. 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 I don't know. I don't, I don't get, I don't get all ooey gooey all over some of those things. Yeah. I, right. Right. It, it's neat. It's cool. Uh, the, the, I like the, uh, the GTC just because the whole package is so damn bizarre. Uh, it's, it's worth, it's worth having because the whole thing is cool. And yeah. It fits that it should have some crazy mechanism, but in a way it complicates things and it's a very simple thing to begin with. So it seems sort of counterintuitive. 
So, uh, favorite blade shape? You said uh, it's, the, definitely. It's, the, it's the clip point. Yeah, clip point Bowie. So who does it best? Who does it? Because that is my favorite shape also, and I, I have some opinions myself. Uh, who, who makes the Bowie shape the best? And in, in folders, for me, the, the godfather of that would be the Lanny's clip, which is Tony Bowes. But as far as, like, you know, people that I maybe could obtain, uh, Enrique Pena. Mm-hmm. He, he just, his, man. I actually bought one of his, uh, the X series Lanny's clip that he made, but it had a recurve in the blade and I just, yeah, I remember that. I remember that you, you made a video on that knife, I think. Yeah, I did. It was a long time ago, but yeah. So did that recurve, that was a a deal breaker for you? Uh, not necessarily. I think it was a combination of things because I didn't know he was going to come out with another run and I really wanted one. So I bought, the last variation they had and it was the all titanium with the jig pattern in it and it just didn't do it for me i don't know it just you know as much as i like clip points and stuff like that i think that along with the recurve i just it it, it was a turn off <laughs> so i got rid of it too much of a good thing in one spot do you have this happen where you're so excited and then uh, you finally maybe save up at something big or something you, you, you get worked up about and then you get it and it's just kind of, you just want to love it more, but yeah, you, you can't. Yeah. That happens about 90% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's, I just find that you just, it's almost better to, you know, just try not to get over excited about it because Usually it might be a great folder, but you're just gonna it's not gonna meet your expectations of what you hoped it was. Right, right. It is just a thing. Yeah. And uh I mean that's what these all are that we get so uh excited about. But it is a thing and it's made by people and there's a community of people who love this thing. What what's your feeling about the knife world, the knife community as it's called, uh in general? <sighs> I tell you, I've been around for a while through the forums and other stuff like that. And it's very interesting to see the trends and shifts that go back and forth and, and, and then how much they influence me without me knowing, you know, when I first got into knives, it was all about those hard use knives, you know, thick. If I wouldn't buy it, if it didn't have four millimeter stock (laughs) or better, (laughs) but at that time in my life, I wasn't, I wasn't using my knives. I wasn't, cutting much. <laughs> uh, it literally probably wasn't till my accident that I started using my knives. Like if I needed to use them, I used them. You know, I didn't worry about scratching something because I find now I find more enjoyment out of that. You know, before it was just seeing it pristine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when a knife accumulates honest wear, it's, there's something very, very gratifying about that, especially, uh, Aluminum handled knives. Yeah, they do take a nice, nice character marks, as, as I call them. So, uh, uh, you you've had good impression or good um, good experiences with the people in the knife world. Yeah, um, I, I hate to keep harping back on it, but after my or while I was in in the hospital, actually when I was in a coma, my wife knew she knew how much I you know I love the knife community and she posted on my Instagram telling everybody what happened and if they were interested in following my progress to follow her I mean follow her on Facebook and it was unbelievable the amount of people that my wife had no clue who they were that were checking on me mm-hmm. telling my wife stories of you know what they liked about me and you know it it just it was really heartwarming and it made me realize how many great people we have in our community so i I try to give back any chance i can i i like hearing that and i hear that a lot especially a community of people grouped around something that uh can easily be misconstrued you know people love to misconstrue uh knives and guns and make people who are enthusiasts about them out to seem like psychos or whatever so it's so nice. Uh, I, I just love hearing about uh, people helping each other out. There's so little 
drama, it seems like, relative to other uh, areas of interest. Um, I love love martial arts, and there was a period of time where I followed the arguments online, and they're incredibly, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's amazing how people can really get into their camps. And I feel like uh, from everyone I've met doing this show, and I can't wait to meet people at Blade Show, there's just a bunch of really interesting, cool, and diverse people who are who are interested in this thing. Oh, you you going to Blade Show this year? Yes, I am. I've been going for the last three years, and I should be there this year, so I should better meet you this year. Awesome. I will most you, definitely meet you. That that makes the community that much better because you get to see a face to the person you talk to online all the time. Yeah. And you just hang out. Like especially the, the funnest part to me is after the show going to the pit mm-hmm. and hanging out with everybody and their mama drinking beers and whatever. <laughs> it's a great time. So who uh is your overall favorite designer slash maker slash you can make a manufacturer if you want, but like who is your, you know, for me, it's er- Ernest Emerson. Love Ernest Emerson. Love his designs. Now, yeah, he, he, he's polarizing. His designs are polarizing. Oh, yeah. And even though they're, they're not the type, like the slicing machines that I like, I still own, I still own several and I, I own a few now. <laughs> That, you know, it's just something about their knives, you know, those are true hard use knives. Yeah, they're, they're, they're inherently appealing, especially, uh, especially to the, um, the young boy in me who, who is the knife collector, I guess I gotta yeah. say, it's, you know, it you know that when you have that in your pocket, you're, you're ready to go. And, you know, for me, what does that mean? I'm ready to go pick up my daughter from school. Okay. But still, if something happens along the way, I got an Emerson in my pocket. You know what I mean? Yeah, no doubt. So who's your guy? For me, I don't I don't have any one particular, you know, as far as high end stuff, I love Vox. Mm. Everything he designs, I just love. I love uh the Marcin Schleich, mm. the Polish maker, and I'll tell you the these uh French makers and uh whatever, I don't know what they put in the water there in South <laughs> Africa. But wow, man, they are just unbelievable. Yeah, France and South Africa. Yeah, uh, David Lespect right now. It's yes, a, God, I, his his uh, his work is blindingly beautiful to me. Like I just I just I just found out about him recently because uh, my buddy Daddy O E D C on Instagram he's got one, and I just started following him. And man, I sat there for hours looking at all his Hamon blades and. Uh, no, I probably won't ever own one, but I'll I'll drool over them for a while. So, Nick, do you have a uh, uh, a knife story you can share with me before we get to our speed round? Something oh, could, knife could be, story. Yes, it could could be uh, save the day. Could be you stabbed yourself. I've done that many times. My stories. No, look, I got, I got <laughs> me and my wife. My wife, she's always uh, you know either she's glad I got a knife in my pocket because we're in a sketchy part of town. Or you carrying a knife? Well, we were in the Dallas, and we were going to the Dallas uh, Stadium. What is it? The AT and T, whatever. I don't know. One of them stadiums. And we get to the thing, and I look up, and I'm like, "Oh, there's a metal detector. What <laughs> am I gonna do?" And I had a Sabenza 21 in my pocket, and my wife was like. Uh, and my car was miles, miles away. I was like, what am I going to do? So I'm looking around, seeing if I can stash it somewhere. But I was like, I can't do it. So I watched a couple of people in front of me. You know, they wanted their, like, where their belt area was. Huh? And they lifted up their shirt. And they're like, I got a belt on. And they were like, okay. And they did it. So I was like, huh. So I clipped it to my boxer shorts. <laughs> Sweating bug shots. My wife's like, what did you do with it? I was like, don't worry about it. <laughs> I was like, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna at least try because I'm not getting rid of this four hundred dollar knife. I was sweating buckshots, but it worked. Oh my god, that is funny. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who among us that hasn't looked for a place to stash a knife? Oh my god, that is uh, that's funny. But you you made it through. You made yeah, it. Yeah, I made it through. And 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 it, you know, I, it's like now it's almost like I need a. If we're going somewhere, I have to find out. Hey, do y'all have metal detectors there? Yeah. <laughs> or what are y'all feelings about knives? Because 
Um, it happened to me again in New Orleans. We went to, I didn't realize this uh, museum was in a governmental building. And I literally had to pay the guard to hold my knife. <laughs> he made you? <laughs> well, she was like, I can't do it. I was like, ma'am, I'll pay you. I was like, I don't know what to do. I'm too far away. My wife's like, would you please stop bringing the knives with you? <laughs> <laughs> it's a cottage industry. Knife Yeah, life. yeah. And I was like, it's just, a, it's just a second nature to me, though. You know, I can't leave home without one. Well, yeah, I mean, it's true. And not only that, but uh, you were the like one of very few people in that stadium with a knife at that time. So if, if anything happened, they'd be glad that you, <laughs> yeah. that you were there. And bring the tools. Yeah. At least I wasn't one of the belligerent drunk people with, you know, having a knife on me. So. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I'm not a big drinker, so I was good. Yeah. yeah. I didn't feel I didn't feel really bad about it. <laughs> so I have about 15 or so questions I want to ask you. And it, it's just a, a, a one word answer. OK. It's to, to sort of get the cut of your jib, the kind of knife knife person you are. All righty. So uh, first, fixed or folder? Folder. Flipper or thumb stud? Thumb stud. Washers or bearings? Washers. Tip up or down? Tip up. I mean, yeah, tip up. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Tanto or Bowie? Bowie. Hollow ground or flat ground? Hollow. Full size or small? Small. Gentleman's or tactical? Tactical. Automatic or bally song? Oh. Huh. I don't care that carry either, but if I had to, it'd be auto. ZT or we? Uh, we. Steel will or real steel? <laughs> uh, uh, steel will. Okay, uh, milled or spring clip? Uh, spring clip. Carbon fiber or micarta? Micarta. Finger choil or choil free? Uh, finger choil. That's on the blade, by the way. Yeah, finger okay. choil. Form or function? Uh, function. And finally, one knife for the rest of your life. Uh, uh, Sabenza 21. Wow. With such decision, with such decisiveness. <laughs> I like it. I like it. You know, um, it might not be to me. I, I mean, I love my Sabenza 21. Might not be the one that gets my heart racing the fastest, the quickest. But yeah, I could see that being the lifetime knife for sure. Yeah, that that's that's the same way I feel. I mean, it's not it doesn't it's not the wow me type of knife, but I know it's gonna last me forever. Yeah. So and and there's something inherently pleasing about that. Yeah. Well, uh Nick Stasa twenty three, thank you so much for coming on the Knife Junkie Podcast. It's been nice to know uh get to know the guy behind these awesome videos and uh Thanks for keeping us all informed as to what's out there. And uh, uh, like this new mini archbishop you, you just did a video on. Now I really yeah. want to get my hands on that. I was not considering it. And uh, <laughs> now I am. So thanks for feeding me addiction. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Hey, you feed my addiction too when I watch your videos. So, <laughs> Well, right on. Anyway, Nick, again, thanks for coming on. <laughs> Great to meet you, sir. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I had a good one. All right. Take care. See you later. Follow the Knife Junkie on Instagram at the knifejunkie.com slash Instagram. All right, Bob, back on the Knife Junkie podcast, the interview with Stasa23. You can find him on YouTube and uh, Instagram, both of those uh, same handles, Stasa, S-T-A-S-S-A-2-3. And uh, we hope uh, if you're not subscribed to his Instagram or his YouTube, you'll go check him out there. What would you think about the interview, Bob? Oh, you know, I I walked away uh, feeling uh, too Two things about uh, Stasa that I, I kind of knew beforehand, but it, they were solidified uh, just in this conversation. One being that uh, this guy knows a lot about knives, and he tests them a lot and uses them a lot. And I frequently uh, will readily admit that I am more of a collector and, uh, you know, an enthusiastic user when it comes up in my life. But it rarely comes up in my life, you know, legitimately. For Stasa, he uses his knives a lot. And also, uh, the other the other thing I noticed was just how valuable it is to have a, an area of interest when times get tough. He was talking about his accident at the chemical plant. It seems like uh, getting involved with making knife videos, getting involved with YouTube, the knife community more heavily, knife collecting more heavily and seriously, 
was something that really helped Nick kind of uh, heal. So it's preaching to the choir, but but it, this isn't just uh, you know always about uh, acquiring new knives, and uh, there there is something a little bit deeper that goes into having such an appreciation for things. Well, and you always hear about the power of community, and uh, you know yeah, living living yeah. example of, of that right there. So good good story, absolutely. All right. Another interview show is coming up next week. Don't forget our midweek supplemental podcast where Bob gets a chance to uh, dive into some of the knife news stories and uh, give updates about the collection and uh, talk about some other knives and that kind of stuff. That's every Wednesday. So uh, two chances to catch the Knife Junkie. So if you like knives, you know where to go. So for Bob, the Knife Junkie DeMarco, I'm Jim, the Knife Newbie person. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Knife Junkie.